Okay, hi and welcome to Video Notes 10.8, using the discriminant. But really, let's throw something else in there that we have to talk about first is, what is a solution? We haven't gotten that far yet. We're still in the pre-solving section, so we're going to be solving in the next unit. But it'd be nice to know what it is before we get there. So today, we're going to understand what a solution is, and then better yet, we're going to use the discriminant to find the number of solutions, which will help cut our time down. Um, if there's a solution that we're looking for, or a number of solutions we're looking for, we might not solve it because the discriminant tells us otherwise. So, let's get into this a little bit deeper. What is a solution? And to really understand what a solution is, we have to go ahead and we're going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to show you a little bit of a solving technique to kind of get us going. So, we've seen quadratics like this before, and we've been through the factoring unit, and we know to factor this particular quadratic, where the A value is 1. We take A times C, or 3, and then in the bottom, we put the sum of 4. And we know that we're looking for two factors that multiply to 3 that are going to sum to 4, and there's only one set, which is 1 and 3. And we know that we're from that, because the A value is 1 again, that we get to do this. We can write those factors there. Now, this part means that we're solving. We'll get into that in the next unit. But right now, we're going to cheat a little bit. What we're going to see here in the next unit is that these are going to tell us that the actual what it, we're going to solve using them, let's put it that way. And what we're going to find out from these is that x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. That's what we're going to find out. So what do these correspond to? What do these mean? Well, let's take a quick little look. If I graph this equation right here, um, and I take a look at this, here's that quadratic that we just factored. And then I did a little cheat method and I solved it. But look, in solving it, notice it says negative 3 and negative 1. These two points here. These two points are special points in particular, right? Actually, so is this one here. But these two in particular are called x-intercepts. And when we solve, we're finding these x-intercepts. So let's bring that back to the notes. In the notes, and I think I messed up there a little bit. That should be a negative 3, sorry. So negative 3 and negative 1, when we solve, or after factoring we solve here, we find out what the x-intercepts of a function is. So basically, every time you solve, what you're doing is you're finding its x-intercepts. And that's kind of a point we can use for graphing. There are points useful for um, problem-solving situations um, with quadratics. It's where things or projectiles hit the ground. So they're very, very useful. So what I want you to pick up from this is that when you solve, solutions are x-intercepts. Now, how many possible solutions can there be for a quadratic? Well, I've sketched out three different scenarios for you, and that really should cover all of them no matter how it looks. Again, this is for quadratics. So if I have a quadratic here, and this is the shape, and I know we haven't been fully introduced to it, but if this is the shape, a quadratic is a U-shape, it could cross possibly two times. Okay, That's going to be two x-intercepts. It could also just touch at its vertex, which would lead us to one intercept. And there's a possibility that how I draw this U-shape, that it doesn't intersect the x-axis at all. Hey, remember that section on complex solutions? That's that one, right? So... There's three scenarios we can tell how many solutions are by looking at one little piece of information. And that little piece of information is called the discriminant. So the discriminant is, if we put it in standard form, the quadratic that we're looking at, so ax squared plus bx plus c, if it's in standard form, right, has to be standard form. Let's put that in there. Standard form, okay? If it's in standard form, you take the coefficients only of a, b, and c, and you put them into this little equation here, b squared minus 4ac. Again, it has to be in standard form. That's what that must equal, um, must be equal to zero means, right? Standard form. So if we do that and we do this little calculations, if we come out with a positive value from the calculation, it doesn't matter what the value is. Um, the value doesn't matter at all. Okay? We only care if it's positive that it means that it's two solutions, meaning that if we have a coordinate plane that that quadratic is crossing two times. If we come up with the value of zero, that's the only time that the value actually matters, I guess, is if it's zero, it means that on our coordinate plane that the vertex is exactly one touching into one location only. And if it comes up to be negative, it means that that quadratic is not intersecting the x-axis. And that's really all the discriminant does. It tells us if there's two solutions, one solution, or zero solution. So it's a nice, useful little tool that we can use in the next section to help us out. So let's get down here and take a look at what it looks like. So I've got a bunch of problems here, and we're going to do one. We'll walk through one, and we'll do a couple more. So looking at this first one here, make sure it's in standard form. 
um, 3x squared minus 5x minus 1. Again, that's standard form, right? My highest term is to the left, my linear term's in the middle, and my constant's at the right there. Does it matter that the zero's on this side? Nah, it, we could rewrite it if it makes you uncomfortable. It doesn't matter. But in this case, all I need to know is what the coefficients of my quadratic, linear, and constant term are. So a is 3, that's the coefficient of my quadratic term. Negative 5 then is the coefficient of my linear term, and negative 1 is my constant. We're going to put them into the discriminant to find out how many possible solutions there are. So make sure you write this down while you're doing it. So b squared, or negative 5 squared, minus 4, right, minus 4, times a, which is 3, and c, which is 1. So you can see I plugged those in, and I did a quick calculation. And at this point, you can almost tell that it's positive, right, because 25 plus 12. So it really doesn't matter if we get to 37. Positive means that there's two solutions. Let's do that again. Let's do that for B real quick. So notice that B, however, is not in standard form. We're not in AX squared plus BX plus C form. So I need to make that happen, which really means that this piece, as a linear term, needs to go to the left, and this 3 needs to go to the left. So I'm going to add the inverses of those, right? So I'm going to have negative 3X squared plus 6X, and I'm going to subtract 3, and then it'll be set equal to 0, or in standard form. So I find out that my A value is negative 3, my b value is 6, and my c value is negative 3. But notice, if you did not have it in standard form, how you'd have positive 3 for your c and negative 6 for your b. So be very careful that you are in standard form before you start. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and write out the discriminant with our values in it. So b squared is 6 squared. okay? And then we've got minus 4 times our a value, which is negative 3 and times our c val value, which is also negative 3. So negative 4 times negative 3 times negative 3. Now here's a little trick sometimes you can see. This value is going to be 36. And then if you look here, if this ends up being positive, you already know the whole thing's going to be positive. So you don't even have to go any farther if you're paying attention. But this is going to end up being negative because I've got three negatives. So the result will be um, a negative value somewhere in there. So I'm going to end up with 36, or 6 squared, minus 4 times 3 times 3, which is actually 36. Or we find out that it's 0. So 0 means one solution. That's all this discriminant does. It doesn't actually solve. It doesn't do us anything. It's just a little trick or a little thing we can do to cut down our time in the next section, if we choose to use it. All right, so let's do another one. Here's C. Again, noticing it's not in standard form. So I'm looking at this. I notice I'm not equal to 0 or I'm not in 8x squared plus bx plus c. C is on the wrong side. So I'm going to move that over. So I'm going to get 3x squared minus 4x minus 7 is equal 0. Now I'm ready. So I'm going to plug in all my parts, 3, negative 4, and negative 7. So it's b squared, or negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 7. Again, eventually you'll memorize that. So if I do a quick little calculation of this, negative 4 squared is 16. And negative 4 times 3 times negative 7 is positive 84. All I need to know at that point, even though it's 100, is that that's a positive value. So again, I've got two solutions. Let's do it one more time, and then we'll be done with these notes. So 5x squared plus 8. Notice my linear term's on the wrong side, so I'm going to add the inverse to get to the other side. So I'm going to end up with 5x squared um, minus 2x plus 8. So my coefficient is 5, negative 2 and positive 8. So let's plug those in then. Negative 2 squared, that's my b value squared, minus 4, right, times a, which is 5, times c, which is 8. So again, I can kind of see that this is going to be a negative number and larger than this. So at this point, I could probably call this negative if you're paying attention. But let's go ahead and calculate it out. Negative 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 5 times 8, and make it all negative, is going to be negative 160. Or the final value is negative 156, right? And when we find out is that a negative value means that there's no solutions. Really, this is a complex solution, but we'll talk about that much later, okay? So that's the discriminant. That's what it's for. It just really tells you the number of solutions that you can find. Um, if you're paying attention, it does give you a little piece. I'll give you a hint that the discriminant later will be something that we calculate anyway in solutions. So it's going to be something we do anyhow, but it's nice to know in advance. So discriminant, 
two solutions, I'm sorry, positive means two solutions, zero means one solution, negative means no solutions. And the other thing that we learned is that x-intercepts are solutions, sometimes referred to as zeros. All right, good job today. We'll see you in class.